if you had taken a lineup, you know, freshman year in high school and said, who of all these kids will become a drug addict, no one would have ever picked me. When she was a junior in high school, I found a Vicodin in her purse, and I had no idea what a red flag that was. 46 people die every day from opioid overdoses. One out of four teenagers reports taking a prescription opioid for non-medical uses, either to get high and to have fun recreationally, or to self-medicate their mood. I'm Anthony Sideri. I'm a recovering heroin addict. I had a regular normal childhood, vacations and family dinners, and I played sports. So I played hockey. I went to a party, and I saw the captain of my hockey team drinking and smoking weed. I thought drinking and smoking wasn't that bad. When I was introduced to heroin, I was sniffing Oxycontin. I sniffed heroin for the first time. I never did Oxycontin again. I just started sniffing heroin every day. And at the time, my life was completely normal from the outside. I was introduced to needles, and that was a huge step for me. And that's when my life really started to get out of control. Um, lost my job, got kicked out of my apartment. I had my parents, my friends, all calling me saying, let us help you. Please, we love you, we want to help you. I said, I'll quit on my own, I can handle it, I'm in control. And I pretty much said, leave me alone. And I said it to everybody. And it was right around then when they had to see me on the front page of every paper and on the news because I got arrested for a bank robbery. And that's where my addiction took me. A normal kid growing up in North Andover, playing sports, experimenting with drinking and smoking weed to a full-blown heroin addict robbing a bank just to keep my addiction alive. Young people are, are particularly vulnerable to becoming addicted to prescription opioids because their brain is still undergoing development. And because of the addictive nature of these, of these prescription opioids, sometimes what we have seen in our field is that within a matter of weeks or only a few months, young people become physiologically dependent, meaning that not only are they psychologically seeking these medications, but their bodies become physically dependent on these, on these medications as well. My name is Melissa Weixner, and my youngest of three children died from a heroin overdose. My daughter Amy was a junior in the nursing program at Boston College. She progressed from prescription painkillers in college to snorting heroin and shooting heroin. And I never would have expected that my daughter would shoot heroin. I don't want another family to go through what we went through, losing a child to this disease. Prescription opioid addiction is not a new problem, um, and, but it's a growing problem. We want young people to not succumb to peer pressure, to take your medications responsibly, to have parents hold on to and dispense controlled substances at, at all times, and certainly to know that help is available. Treatment does work, um, but it's a long, it's a long course of, of treatment. My story ends really great, but the truth is it doesn't end well for so many people. Um, I was going through my contacts the other day on my phone, and I have three people that are in my phone who are no longer alive. They died of overdoses, and they died of overdoses while in recovery because they relapsed. And that's the truth behind addiction is people get into recovery and then they relapse and they overdose. The story doesn't end well for so many people. You keep using despite negative consequences, and sometimes you don't get another chance. <laughs>